Hi everyone, this is Mo Volans from Tuts Plus, back with another video tutorial. Now recently I've been doing quite a lot of mastering and mixing tutorials based on separate mixing and mastering techniques. And I'm going to be moving on to some more sound design and synthesis based stuff very soon. But I thought I'd take a bit of an interlude and do something a little different. It's still a production based tutorial, but we're going to be looking at voiceover and spoken word processing. So this isn't going to hit all of you EDM producers out there possibly, but if you're doing your own radio shows and podcasts and tutorials on YouTube or whatever, it might be good for you to, to sort of see how to process a, a, you know, a spoken word vocal, at least so it's, it's presentable. Um, quite a lot of my students ask me how I do it. Well, I like to hit the disc wet, which basically means that it's already processed when it hits ScreenFlow, which is my podcasting or ScreenFlow software. And if things hit the disc wet and they're already processed, it saves me a massive amount of workflow because I do quite a lot of these videos. So it means I don't have to take the vocal out and process it. So my mic, which is this one here, AKG broadcast mic, is going straight into um, Audio Hijack Pro through Soundflower. And I've got a string of effects. And this is not exactly what we're going to be doing today, but I'm just showing you how I do it. You can see this is recording right now. Um, and then I go into Isotope Nectar. And Isotope Nectar is sort of a vocal production suite. So there's a gate. Everything orange here is switched on, by the way. There's a gate uh, just sort of quieting things down in between phrases, but not making silence, just because I've got computers buzzing in here and aircon unit. Um, EQ, just to brighten things up. That's what worked for this AKG mic um, after quite a lot of experimentation because I had to keep recording this and then going back to disc and listening back to it. Um, compressor just to even things out, but I mean, it's, you know, minus one, you know, it's, even if I speak loudly, loudly, you get minus two or three. Uh, no saturation. de uh, just applying a small amount of de in there just to take the sibilance off. You can see it there. And a limiter on the end just to cap things off and make things slightly louder, very slightly. And then I'm actually messing around with the same preset in uh, um, Nectar 2, but I've not matched it yet, so I'm sticking with the old version. Um, then we've got a Waves de right in the end just to catch any extra sibilance, which you can see there. And this preset works well. I, then I can sort of hit hijack and forget. So that's one way of doing it. But if you've then got a vocal here like this, that you've recorded, maybe in not ideal circumstances, and this one wasn't. Um, basically, the mic was about two feet away from a head because it had to be out of a video shot. So it wasn't directly close like this, uh, which is the ideal situation, you know, to be, you know, four or five inches away from the mic, just off center. But this one was, you know, not great. So if we zoom in, you can see some noise floor. Yeah, you can see some noise in between. So it was, you know, the headroom's fine and it, it was recorded through a good preamp, the, the Apogee uh, with the AKG still. And it's a treated room, so it was not terrible, but it's just, if you listen, this is the dry version of those. And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the weather app, you're going to see feedback for whether it's a sunny or rainy day. So this is instant feedback for wherever you are in the software. Okay, so you can hear some room noise. Um, compared to this one you're hearing now. So if we sort of A, B it. Each of those, and if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the weather app, you're gonna see feedback for whether it's a sunny or rainy day. So this is instant feedback for wherever you are in the software. This is also gonna be controllable via iOS and Android apps. And this is a phrase we're gonna be working with, so I'll zoom in a little bit. But um, essentially, you know, it's it, the little bit of bottom end missing, that's the proximity effect because the mic's further away. We've got a bit of noise in between, um, and it's just not that present <clears throat> and it's a little quiet. So we sort of need to tackle all of those. I, I want to make sure a, there's a little bit more low end grunt, but at the same time, there's no rumble on the mic. So, cause there was no low cut. This is completely untreated and the low cut on the mic is switched off. So totally open. So let's sort of recreate what we've got in the, um, in the nectar. So first of all, I'm going to start with an EQ and sometimes you might want to use something like a channel strip. If you've got something like this, by the way, let's use the um, universal audio um, channel strip. But Waves do these, a lot of companies do these now, you know, just analog style channel strips. You know, you can filter off 
low end. You can add compression, gating, and EQ all in one unit. Um, and this would probably be the ideal vocal treatment center, but we're not going to do that. Um, we're going to use separate plugins so that you can see it happening in real time. So let's go with some fab filter stuff. Um, this is affordable. It's a nice alternative to stock stuff in, uh, in you know, your DAW door, however you want to say it. <laughs> I've definitely caught some flack on that one. Um, and we're just going to filter off some low end and I'm going to put an analyzer in so that you can sort of see uh, exactly what's going on. Let's go post EQ. And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like so the if app, you're going to see feedback for whether it's a sunny just turn or this down in my cans so a little. This is instant feedback. You can basically see this low end energy. Let's just in fact turn this off. Android apps. So um, who are which of those? And if you dig bypass it, sorry. Okay, like this low end energy here is what we want to try and get rid of. The first fundamental of the vocal is the useful bit. So sort of around 80, 100 hertz is the bottom end of your voice. And Android apps. If we filter this off, probably a bit of an easier um, curve, to be honest with you. But, um, so this is instant feedback for wherever you are in the software. Let's go with about. Controllable via iOS. That's pretty smooth. So who are which of those? And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the weather app, you're going to see feedback. And um, we'll go with the 12 dB day. curve, maybe. So this is instant feedback for wherever you are in the software. This is also going to be controllable. And you can see that low en energy has been tamed there. So, so who are which of those? But remember to have a listen to it. Into the system and load up something like the weather app. You're going to see feedback for whether it's a. Sunny and then we can day. add a little bit of low so end in back in low mids for wherever you are in the software. This is also going to be controllable via iOS and Android apps. So who are which of those? And if you dig deep. So I like things to be a bit brighter. So I've added a little bit of um, high end, high mid EQ. Um, obviously by doing this, we're probably enhancing any sibilance, but we can deal with that later and uh, claw back things, you know. And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the weather app, you're going to see feedback for whether it's a sunny or rainy day. So this is instant feedback for wherever you are in the software. So there's not really much wrong with the vocal. It just needs a bit of enhancement. So I'm not, I'm only cutting subs. There's no other subtractive to do here because there's no real problem elements. Um, I'm enhancing the high end a touch. I'm enhancing the low mids a touch. Um, you can maybe take this area down to compensate a touch, but th basically there's not a huge amount of work to do. And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the weather app, you're going to see feedback for whether it's a sunny or rainy day. So this is increasing this area will improve intelligib intelligibility um, and make things a little clearer. Okay, so that's some mild EQ, and then I'm going to add some uh, gating. Uh, we'll use the uh, the logic gate, I guess. This not too bad. Um, and we can, and if you dig deeper into the system, go to bring the threshold right up so that it's um, cutting off completely. So this is instant feedback. And this reduction's useful because we don't want complete reductions, so otherwise you end up with this sort of very iOS false. iOS and Android apps. And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the weather app, but you're going to leave the reduction down fully when you start because then you can find the peaks and then we can fine tune the attack and release. And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the weather app, you're going to see feedback for whether it's a sunny or rainy day. So this is instant feedback. You can hear that chopping wherever off. Wherever you are in the software. Okay, so it's it's chopping off. It sounds a bit strange. And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the weather app, you're going to see feedback for whether it's a sunny or rainy day. So this is instant feedback for wherever you are in the software. This is also okay. And then we're going to fine tune the release. And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the weather app, you're going to see feedback for whether it's a sunny or rainy day. So this is instant feedback for wherever you are in the software. And then we can bring the reduction down so that it's a bit more natural. And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the weather app, you're going to see feedback for whether it's a sunny or rainy day. So this is instant feedback for wherever you are in the software. This is also going to be controllable via iOS and Android apps. Okay, so that's basically reducing it by 37 dB rather than 100. So you, you are hearing some of that noise in between, which is what you expect to hear, but it's massively reduced. And we did the tuning with it at full, full tilt so that you can hear exactly how the gate's working. And then we bring the reduction into a natural level. Okay, so that's basically what I've done in Nectar. So that works pretty well. And then you can go ahead 
and add any enhancement or anything you want. But we're going to add some compression here. Um, I like a nice easy compressor. Generally, the SSL models do pretty well. Tell you what, let's use the Native Instruments um, Solid Bus Comp. Um, this is basically S uh, Natives and Soft Tubes version of the uh, SSL compressor. Any of the SSL compressors will do, but a, a nice sort of analog model. And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the Weather app, you're going to see feedback going to go with a reasonably a fast attack. Day. So this is and you can put feedback. the release on auto. I don't usually use auto release, but on voiceover it can work pretty well. And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the Weather app, you're going to see feedback for whether it's a sunny or rainy day. So this is instant feedback for wherever you are in the software. This is also going to be controllable via iOS and Android apps. Now at this point, once you've got sort of 4 to 10 dB of reduction, and you can, with voiceover and vocals generally, you can have a bit more reduction than you would with most other signals. Um, we can start to dial some of the, you saw me raising the makeup gain there. I'm dialing some gain back into the stream. And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the weather app, you're going to see feedback for whether it's a sunny or rainy day. So this is instant feedback for wherever you are in the software. This is also going to be controllable via iOS and Android apps. Now, you can put your DS wherever you want in the chain, really. Different people like it in different places. I prefer to put it near the end just because, and sometimes I'll have two. You saw that I had one in the next two and then another one. Um, but generally, and I'm going to go with the uh, Waves ds -er, I think, here. Um, that's the one that I was using. Um, and if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the Weather app, you're going to see feedback for whether it's a sunny or rainy day. So this is instant feedback for wherever you are in the software. This and th this isn't as sibilant as the direct mic one, like this one that I'm doing right now. If I took the DSs off this, you'd probably be deafened by the sibilance. Um, but the sibilance is less because, again, the mic was further away, so things aren't as intense. But you can still see a little. And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the Weather app, you're going to see feedback for whether it's a sunny or rainy day. So this is instant feedback for wherever you are in the software. Don't go too far with this because if you go too far, it'll sound dull. And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the Weather app, you're going to see feedback for whether it's a sunny or rainy day. You just need, you know, 3 to 6 dB and there. if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the Weather app, you're going to see feedback for whether it's a sunny or rainy day. So this is instant feedback for wherever you are in the software. Okay, and then right at the end, if you like things to be a bit more upfront, you can put a limiter. Again, our sort of a nice analog model. Um, we're going to use the precision limiter, but you know any limiter will do. Your stock one from your door, like Logic Stock, would do, do fine. And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the Weather app, you're going to see feedback for whether it's a sunny or rainy day. So this is instant feedback for wherever you are in the software. This is also going to be controllable via iOS and Android apps. I'm really using it as a protection thing more than to induce massive amounts of volume. You can see a little bit of reduction, but ultimately. I'm not putting this to like maximize the vocal and make it, you know, crushed um, like a master. Um, so there you go. We've got a Pro-Q doing some enhancement, uh, adding some a little bit of sort of low end grunt, but at the same time taking away um, some of the subsonics uh, and a touch of high, a very small amount of air high end. Then uh, a noise gate, which we discovered we could uh, use sort of less reduction to make it sound a bit more natural. And that's the key with noise gates, make them sound natural, not that horrible sliced off, you know, false sort of gating. Then we've got a bus compressor, which you could put at the start if you wanted to. There's no hard and fast rules about the order here. Experiment with it yourself. But um, I've got a fair amount of sort of gentle compression with the attack and release. Uh, then we've got some DSing, and then finally a limiter. And hopefully this makes the whole thing... And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the weather app... Sound a bit nicer. Let's have a listen without the uh, the processing. And if you dig deeper into the system and load up something like the weather app, you're going to see feedback for whether it's a sunny or rainy day. So this is instant feedback for wherever you are in the software. This is also going to be controllable via iOS and Android apps. Okay, so we're, we've made it sound a bit more upfront, but we've kept it sounding natural. I've hopefully taken away some of that room noise so it doesn't sound like it's mic'd so far away, made it sound a bit more direct. Um, and, you know, there's not a massive amount of um, really intense processing going on here. And I think that's key. You don't want your voice to sound really, really, you know, over the top. Um, I process my things a little bit more for, 
for, for this that you're listening to now just because it's direct mic and it's easy to do so. But hopefully this will help you produce your own podcasts and uh, mix your own vocals and voiceovers and uh, sort of show you that you don't have to go too far with the processing. So as usual, leave comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you've got a different method, it's great. It'd be great to hear it. And uh, suggestions for future tutorials are always welcome. I'll see you next time.